Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Where would we be if we hadn't had Andrew's teaching? It has just really like given me so many revelations. He filled me with a new vision of myself. I'm so grateful that he has been obedient to the calling that God has placed on his life. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on a series that I started nearly three weeks ago, teaching on spirit, soul, and body. This is a, a book that I wrote a long time ago, but this is the revelation that the Lord used. I think it was back about 1971 or 72. And this has become a foundation of everything that God has taught me. This is just totally, radically changed my life. And there's no way that I can go back through everything that I've been teaching. I am giving that book away and I would encourage you to please take advantage of it. If I had your address, I'd send it to you free. <laughs> Amen. I just really want you to have it. And we also have it in Spanish. We have it in USB, DVD, CDs, uh, audio Bible, and even an, a video uh, illustrated uh, teaching on this. And so uh, we'll be giving out all that information at the end of the program. But honestly, this is just life transforming. And I promise you, if you got hold of these truths, it would just revolutionize your life. I've had so many people that this has become a foundational revelation that opens up a door to just nearly everything else that God wants to do in your life. And so please take advantage of it. Uh, again, there's no way I can go back and summarize everything that I've already taught on this. What I want to focus on today is to share with you about faith and how you already have the faith of the Son of God living on the inside of you. You know, I would suspect that every person watching this program knows that faith works and that there is uh, miracles that are available through faith, but the average person just doesn't feel like they have enough of faith or their faith isn't a good quality. I'm going to try and show you today, and this is one of the things that came out of this teaching on spirit, soul, and body. As a matter of fact, in 1976 is when I think it was that I did my very first teaching that I ever made. I made it on a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and it was on the faith of God. And I uh, got that from this teaching about spirit, soul, and body. When I begin to understand that it's not my body that got saved, it's not my soul that got saved, but it my, was my spirit, and that in the spirit, I'm identical to Jesus. And you know, just yesterday I was teaching out of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, where it says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Faith is a part of your born again spirit. It's one of the first, and it's not an immature faith that has to grow and develop. What I'm going to be trying to share with you from a number of scriptures is that your faith in your spirit is already complete. It's mature. It's God's kind of faith. You don't really have a faith problem. What you've got is a knowledge problem. You know, the scripture says over in 2 Peter chapter 1, it's talking about grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And then in verse 3 it says, According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. And then verse 4 says that knowledge is what gave us these exceeding great and precious promises. So everything that you need comes through knowledge. And in your spirit you've already got the fullness of of the Godhead dwelling in you bodily. You've already got love, joy, peace, and faith, all of these things. Your faith is already there. What, what you need is knowledge about what you have. In uh, Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, Paul was praying a prayer for his friend Philemon, and he says, I pray that the communication of your faith would become effectual. That means it would begin to work by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus. It didn't say that I pray that your faith would begin to work by you getting an, you know, another dose of the Holy Ghost, by you getting a double portion. You'll often hear people talk about things like this, and they will use Elijah 
and Elisha. And Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's spirit on him and did twice as many miracles. And I've actually been in services where they're having an Elisha double portion night. And you come down here, we're going to anoint you with oil and we're going to pray that you get a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe you could get twice as much of the Holy Spirit functioning in you as you have now. But the truth is, in your spirit, you already have the fullness of the Godhead. You can't get any more of God. You can't get a double portion of Jesus because now you in your spirit as Jesus is, so are you in this world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. So in the spirit, you're already complete. You can't get any more. You can't get more anointed. You can't get more faith. You can't get more of anything. In the spirit, your spirit is as perfect and complete as it will ever be. But you aren't only a spirit. You also have a soul, your mental, emotional part, and you also have a body. And you can get more of what's in your spirit out. So in a sense, I understand that through laying on of hands, you can transfer things and there can be things happen. But when it comes to faith, you've already got all of the faith you'll ever need. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you are born again by faith in what Jesus did. And that faith is not of yourselves. Did you know when you got born again, you had to use a supernatural faith? You know, when I was a kid... I actually had this illustration in church. They brought a chair up on the platform and uh, they had somebody come up and sit in that chair. And then the pastor said, now see, this is an example of faith because you don't know if that chair is going to hold you up. You didn't inspect it. You just came up here and sat in it. And so that was faith. But let me just say that that is a human type of faith. It was based on what you could see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. If that chair would have only had three legs instead of four legs, and if the thing had been falling over, you wouldn't have sat in it with a human faith because your senses would have told you it wasn't trustworthy. Plus, when you go into somebody's house or, or something and you go and sit in a chair, you know that they wouldn't have a bum chair out there, and so you have faith in a person that you can see that they're going to have a chair that will hold you up. But when you come to believe for your salvation... You're believing for things that you can't see. For instance, you've never seen God, and yet you have to believe there is a God in order for you to be saved. You've never seen Jesus. Now, somebody might have seen a vision or something, but I'm saying the average person has not seen Jesus. You didn't see Jesus die for you. You didn't see him raised from the dead for you, and yet you're believing on things that you can't see. See, a human faith will be based on what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. But a supernatural faith, you're believing for things that you can't see. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it was talking about how Abraham was called, well, his name was Abram, but God renamed him and called him Abraham, which meant father of many nations before he even had a child. And it says that's because God calls those things that be not as though they were. God didn't wait until he was the father of many nations before he called him that. He called him a father of many nations before he even had a child. God's kind of faith is supernatural. It's not limited to what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. So I say all of that to say that when you got born again, you had to have supernatural faith because you were believing in a God that you couldn't see. You were believing in Jesus that you didn't see. You believed that Jesus died for you, which you didn't see that. You believed he rose from the dead, which you didn't see that. You believed that your sins were forgiven. You cannot do that with just a human faith that is limited to what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. So my point is in Ephesians 2, 8, when it says you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves, that faith isn't of yourselves. God literally gave you a supernatural faith so that you could believe and receive salvation. Where did this faith come from? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Did you know when you hear the word of God, you are hearing God's word, and it brings faith. 
You know, this is kind of a strange way of thinking of things, but sometimes I'm a little strange in the way I think. But if you could imagine that every time a person speaks Scripture out of their mouth, if you could imagine that that's a little container or something, and inside of those words is God's kind of faith. When I'm speaking, when I'm quoting these Scriptures, did you know that God is extending His faith to you through the Word? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And if you will open up your heart and receive it, then this faith that I'm speaking by quoting the Word, it literally can impart this supernatural faith to you where you can believe and receive things that you can't see or feel. This is how faith comes. And so when you got born again, according to Ephesians 2, 8, you were saved by grace. That's what God does for you, independent of you. Through faith, faith is your positive response to what God has already done through grace. And that faith to receive that came by hearing the Word of God. And when you did that, you received supernatural faith, and that's what got you born again. Now, this is important for you to recognize that this wasn't just a human faith based on things that you see. God gave you His faith. We were so destitute that we couldn't even save ourselves. We couldn't even believe and receive salvation with just our human faith. We had to have God impart His supernatural faith to us, and you got born again. And then, according to that verse I was using yesterday, in Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Faith was imparted unto you at salvation. And in your born-again spirit, you already have a supernatural God kind of faith. Let me give you another verse that goes along with that. In Romans chapter 12 and in verse 3, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt to every born-again person is the context of this, the measure of faith. If you are born again, God gave you His supernatural faith, and it didn't evaporate, it didn't expire, when you get born again, you still have God's supernatural faith in you. It says He's dealt to every man the measure of faith. You know, I'm aware that not everybody uses the King James Bible, and many of you, if you use the NIV and some of the other translations, they will say God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. But I don't believe that that's what He's saying. Over in Galatians chapter 2, I'll turn over there in just a minute and show you this is repeated numerous times. I believe it's saying that there's only one measure of faith. God didn't give me more faith than He gave somebody else. God gave every born-again person the supernatural faith that it took to get saved. And every one of us have the same measure of faith in our spirit. The only difference is not what was given us, but how much of it we're using. You have to renew your mind. You have to learn how God's faith works, and you have to spend time in the Word of God to draw this out. But when you got born again, God gave you a supernatural faith. You know, if we had a soup kitchen or something, and if I was dishing out soup to everybody, and if you came by with a bowl, and if I had a ladle that I was using to dip out that soup and to fill everybody's bowl, well, then that would be the measure of soup. But if I had a ladle that I used for some, and another person I used a tablespoon, another person a teaspoon, another person an eyedropper, then there would be different measures. But see, this says that every man has been dealt the measure. When you got born again, faith is now a product of your born again spirit, and your spirit has the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ in it. Let me use a scripture. It says that over in Galatians chapter 2, and in verse 16, it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Again, most people don't really meditate on this, and you skip over words and don't think about it. But look at the wording here. You are justified not by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, not faith in Jesus Christ. 
NOW, I WILL ADMIT THAT IT'S NOT TOTALLY WRONG TO SAY THAT YOU PUT FAITH IN JESUS CHRIST, BUT IT IS TECHNICALLY CORRECT TO SAY THAT YOU ARE JUSTIFIED BY THE FAITH OF JESUS CHRIST. IT WAS WHAT JESUS DID. IT WAS HIS FAITH, AND IT GOES ON TO SAY, EVEN WE HAVE BELIEVED IN JESUS CHRIST THAT WE MIGHT BE JUSTIFIED BY THE FAITH OF CHRIST. AGAIN, RIGHT HERE IT SAYS THAT WE HAVE FAITH IN JESUS CHRIST, BUT THEN TWICE IT SAYS THAT WE ARE JUSTIFIED BY THE FAITH OF JESUS CHRIST AND NOT BY WORKS OF THE LAW, FOR BY THE WORKS OF THE LAW NO FLESH SHALL BE JUSTIFIED. AND THEN HE GOES ON TO SAY IN VERSE 20, I AM CRUCIFIED WITH CHRIST, NEVERTHELESS I LIVE, YET NOT I, BUT CHRIST LIVETH IN ME, AND THE LIFE WHICH I NOW LIVE IN THE FLESH, I LIVE BY THE FAITH OF THE SON OF GOD WHO LOVED ME, AND GAVE HIMSELF FOR ME. NOW, AGAIN, THERE ARE SOME TRANSLATIONS THAT WILL SAY, WELL, WE ARE JUSTIFIED BY FAITH IN THE SON OF GOD. BUT THIS SAYS WE ARE JUSTIFIED BY THE FAITH OF THE SON OF GOD. AND IF YOU TAKE IT IN ITS CONTEXT, VERSE 16, THERE'S TWICE THAT IT TALKS ABOUT FAITH OF JESUS. FAITH BY THE FAITH OF JESUS, NOT JUST FAITH IN JESUS. SO THE POINT THAT I'M MAKING IS THAT WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU COULDN'T EVEN RECEIVE SALVATION WITH JUST HUMAN FAITH BECAUSE THERE ISN'T ANY PHYSICAL, TANGIBLE PROOF. YOU DIDN'T SEE JESUS CRUCIFIED. YOU DIDN'T SEE HIM RESURRECTED. AND YOU CAN ONLY BELIEVE FOR THINGS THAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL IF YOU ARE JUST GOING BY YOUR HUMAN FAITH. BUT YOU HAD TO BELIEVE FOR A SUPERNATURAL FAITH. YOU HAD TO BELIEVE FOR THINGS THAT YOU COULDN'T SEE. SO GOD GAVE YOU HIS FAITH BY YOU HEARING THE WORD OF GOD. THOSE WORDS CONTAINED FAITH, AND YOU TOOK GOD'S FAITH. YOU TOOK THE FAITH THAT WAS IN HIS PROMISES AND BELIEVED. AND IF YOU ARE TRULY BORN AGAIN, THEN YOU USED GOD'S SUPERNATURAL FAITH. AND ACCORDING TO ROMANS CHAPTER 12, VERSE 3, AND GALATIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 20, YOU HAVE THE MEASURE OF FAITH. NOT AN INFERIOR FAITH. IT'S NOT A BABY FAITH. IT'S NOT A SEED FAITH. You, IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU HAVE THE SUPERNATURAL, COMPLETE, MATURE FAITH OF JESUS. IT'S ALREADY THERE. AND GOING BACK TO Philemon CHAPTER 1, VERSE 6, YOU HAVE TO ACKNOWLEDGE THAT FAITH, WHAT YOU HAVE, IN ORDER FOR THAT FAITH TO BEGIN TO BE EFFECTUAL. SO MOST PEOPLE APPROACH GOD AND SAY, OH, GOD, I KNOW FAITH WORKS. I JUST DON'T HAVE ANY OF IT. I JUST, MY FAITH IS WEAK. MY FAITH IS IMMATURE. AS LONG AS YOU'RE THINKING THAT, YOU'RE NEVER GOING TO HAVE BOLDNESS TO BE AUTHORITATIVE AND TO REALLY USE YOUR FAITH. YOU NEED TO START RECOGNIZING THAT WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU USED GOD'S FAITH TO GET BORN AGAIN, AND THAT FAITH WAS GIVEN UNTO YOU. IT IS YOURS, AND IT IS THE MEASURE OF FAITH. YOU HAVE THE SAME FAITH THAT ALL OF THE APOSTLES HAD. MATTER OF FACT, THE APOSTLE PETER SAID THIS OVER IN 2 PETER CHAPTER 1. LET ME JUST TURN OVER AND READ THIS. 2 PETER CHAPTER 1, AND IN VERSE 1, IT SAYS, SIMON PETER, A SERVANT AND AN APOSTLE OF JESUS CHRIST, TO THEM THAT HAVE OBTAINED LIKE PRECIOUS FAITH WITH US THROUGH THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD AND OF OUR SAVIOR, JESUS CHRIST. PETER WROTE TO PEOPLE WHO HAVE LIKE PRECIOUS FAITH WITH HIM. AND HOW DID THEY GET IT? THROUGH THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD AND OF JESUS OUR LORD. THIS IS NOT TALKING ABOUT THROUGH YOUR HOLINESS, THROUGH YOUR FASTING, THROUGH YOUR PRAYER, AND THROUGH ALL OF THESE THINGS. YOU CAME UP WITH THIS SUPERNATURAL FAITH. NO, IT WAS JUST GIVEN TO YOU AT SALVATION. AND PETER SAYS IT TO THOSE WHO HAVE OBTAINED LIKE PRECIOUS FAITH. IF YOU LOOK THAT UP IN THE GREEK, IT'S LITERALLY SAYING TO THE IDENTICAL SAME FAITH THAT HE HAD. PETER IS SAYING THAT YOU HAVE THE SAME FAITH THAT HE HAD. PETER WAS ABLE TO WALK BY AND HIS SHADOW WOULD TOUCH PEOPLE AND THEY WOULD BE HEALED. DID YOU KNOW YOU HAVE THAT KIND OF FAITH, THAT KIND OF POWER ON THE INSIDE OF YOU? PETER WAS ABLE TO RAISE DORCAS FROM THE DEAD. PETER WAS ABLE TO WALK ON THE WATER. YOU HAVE WALKING ON THE WATER, DEAD RAISING POWER ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. THAT'S WHAT PETER SAID. YOU HAVE THE LIGHT, PRECIOUS FAITH. IF YOU SAY, WELL, THAT'S NOT ME, WELL, THEN TEAR SECOND PETER OUT OF YOUR BIBLE BECAUSE IT'S WRITTEN TO PEOPLE THAT HAVE LIGHT, PRECIOUS FAITH. IF YOU AREN'T ACCEPTING THAT YOU HAVE LIGHT, PRECIOUS FAITH, WELL, THEN SECOND PETER DOESN'T APPLY TO YOU. OF COURSE IT APPLIES TO YOU. IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU ALREADY HAVE FAITH. BUT 
THAT FAITH IS ACCORDING TO KNOWLEDGE. IT GOES ON TO SAY DOWN HERE IN VERSE 3, ACCORDING AS HIS DIVINE POWER HATH GIVEN UNTO US ALL THINGS THAT PERTAIN UNTO LIFE AND GODLINESS THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM THAT HATH CALLED US TO GLORY AND VIRTUE. IF YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU HAVE, THEN YOU CAN'T RELEASE IT IF YOU DON'T KNOW THAT YOU HAVE IT. IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THE LAWS THAT GOVERN FAITH, AND FAITH IS GOVERNED BY LAWS THE SAME WAY THAT ELECTRICITY IS GOVERNED BY LAWS OR THAT GRAVITY IS GOVERNED BY LAWS OR AERODYNAMICS, ALL OF THESE THINGS, THERE'S LAWS IN THE NATURAL REALM. THERE'S LAWS IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM. BUT YOU HAVE THE SUPERNATURAL FAITH OF GOD. YOU DO NOT HAVE A FAITH PROBLEM. YOU'VE GOT A KNOWLEDGE PROBLEM. FIRST OF ALL, WE DON'T KNOW WHAT WE HAVE, AND THEN EVEN IF YOU ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU HAVE GOD'S SUPERNATURAL FAITH, YOU DON'T KNOW HOW IT WORKS. LIKE THERE'S SO MANY SPIRITUAL LAWS. ONE OF THEM IS uh, PROVERBS 18, 21, DEATH AND LIFE ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE, AND THEY THAT LOVE IT SHALL EAT THE FRUIT THEREOF. AND MANY PEOPLE DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT, that FAITH IS VOICE ACTIVATED. FAITH HAS TO BE RELEASED THROUGH WORDS. AND SO THEY'RE SPEAKING NEGATIVE WORDS. THEY'RE SPEAKING WHAT THE DOCTOR SAID, WHAT THE BANKER SAID, WHAT THE CRITIC SAID, INSTEAD OF WHAT GOD SAID. AND YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND, BUT YOU'RE HUNG BY YOUR TONGUE WHEN YOU DO THAT. AND SO IT SAYS IN PROVERBS 18, 21, DEATH AND LIFE ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE. NOT JUST LIFE, BUT DEATH AND LIFE. SO IF YOU'RE SPEAKING FORTH JUST YOUR FEARS, IF YOU'RE SPEAKING FORTH JUST THE DOCTOR'S PROGNOSIS, IF YOU'RE SPEAKING FORTH ONLY WHAT THE uh, BANKER HAS TO SAY AND YOU AREN'T GOING BY WHAT GOD'S WORD HAS TO SAY, YOU COULD BE RELEASING DEATH OUT OF YOUR MOUTH AND IT'LL WORK AGAINST YOU. BUT THE TRUTH IS YOU HAVE FAITH ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, BUT IT HAS TO FUNCTION THROUGH THESE LAWS. SO LOOK AT IT THIS WAY, THAT YOU DON'T HAVE A FAITH PROBLEM. WHAT YOU'VE GOT IS A KNOWLEDGE PROBLEM. THE FIRST THING YOU'VE GOT TO DO IS START ACKNOWLEDGING WHAT YOU HAVE, AND THEN YOU'VE GOT TO START LEARNING HOW FAITH WORKS. YOU'VE GOT TO SEE HOW GOD USED HIS FAITH, AND YOU'VE GOT TO START IMITATING. GENESIS CHAPTER 1, GOD SAID, LET THERE BE LIGHT, AND THERE WAS LIGHT. HE RELEASED HIS FAITH, HIS POWER THROUGH HIS WORDS. YOU'VE GOT TO START SPEAKING WORDS. AND ON AND ON, ALL OF THESE THINGS GO. I'M GOING TO MINISTER ON THIS AGAIN TOMORROW. I'M RUNNING SHORT OF TIME TODAY. BUT THE POINT I'M WANTING TO GET ACROSS IS THAT YOU DON'T REALLY HAVE A FAITH PROBLEM. YOU GOT A KNOWLEDGE PROBLEM. YOUR SPIRIT'S PERFECT. YOU DON'T HAVE ANY INADEQUACY IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOUR SPIRIT IS FULL GROWN AND COMPLETE. YOUR FAITH IS COMPLETE IN YOUR SPIRIT, BUT IT HAS TO PASS THROUGH YOUR SOUL TO GET TO YOUR BODY. AND OUR SOUL IS WHERE THE BLOCKAGE IS. OUR SOUL IS WHAT IS HINDERING THE FLOW OF THIS FAITH OUT OF US. AND SO WE'VE GOT TO CHANGE THE WAY WE THINK. WE'VE GOT TO GO BACK TO THE WORD OF GOD AND BEGIN TO CHANGE THE WAY WE THINK. BUT I TELL YOU, THIS SET ME FREE WHEN I REALIZED THAT I HAD THE FAITH OF GOD. I DIDN'T KNOW EXACTLY HOW TO USE IT, BUT JUST KNOWING THAT IT WAS THERE ENCOURAGED ME. I'VE GOT THIS BOOK THAT I'D LOVE TO GIVE YOU, AND IT'LL GO INTO ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT WE'RE TALKING ABOUT, AND I PROMISE YOU IT'LL BE A LOT MORE DETAIL. IT WOULD REALLY, REALLY HELP YOU. IT'S A FREE GIFT TO YOU. THIS IS WHAT CHANGED MY LIFE, THESE TRUTHS. AND SO I'D LIKE TO GIVE IT TO YOU. I'VE GOT IT IN ENGLISH AND IN SPANISH. WE'VE ALSO GOT CD'S, DVD'S, USB'S, A AUDIO BIBLE, AN ILLUSTRATED TEACHING OF THIS. WE ALSO HAVE STUDY GUIDES, AND THIS WOULD JUST BE A LIFE CHANGER FOR YOU. I REALLY, REALLY BELIEVE THAT. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU ALL THE INFORMATION, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY.